Thank you for that, Tuan Syed. Wakilkan kepada semua orang. Uh, what we're going to be talking about today and what has it got to do with our hands and our fingers? Well, there is a Malay peribahasa namanya Allah Bisa Tegal Biasa. When COVID comes around, when any change comes around, what happens is a lot of people can be scared by change. They're scared by change. Number one, they don't know what's going on. Number two, they don't know how to adapt, what to do. So what's the worst thing that we can do? We can either become depressed or we stop, we don't move at all. Or worse, we start blaming. Yeah, siapa punya kerja ni? Who started this COVID? Tengok aku tak boleh cari makan. So, people who adapt very fast, they quickly go and learn, they quickly go and find out how. The challenge is, some of us who have been so long in the industry, sometimes we're shy because malu lah nak belajar balik. <laughs> It becomes something of of a block, a mental block. To, to want to go and learn something new or even worse, learn from more someone younger than you. Like if you want to learn TikTok, you cannot learn it from a 30 or 40 year old. You have to learn it from a 15 year old. I recently attended a, a video editing course uh, using your, your handphone, right? And it was taught by someone 20 years younger than me. But here's the thing about change. If you don't change fast, then change will roll over you. It will happen nonetheless. And people are saying, oh, kenapa? Why, why is training becoming like this now? Now we have to go online. Well, if you remember, if some of you are young enough to remember, in the 1990s, this happened to all trainers and all lecturers as well. There was a time when they were training using OHP, overhead projector. Now, if you are very, very young, you don't know what I'm talking about. An overhead projector is this huge box of light, right? Where you lay on uh, uh, transparency slides. That's where the word slides comes from, where when you talk about PowerPoint slides. It comes from those transparency slides that they used to teach in universities, right? But when the transition came, a lot of lecturers, a lot of trainers kept complaining, why must we use computers? This is easy. I print, I put, I can add on, I boleh tukar-tukar, I can write on, mark, I can mark it whenever I need to. But what happens is the people who complain did not change fast enough, they got left behind. So now this is a change that's happening and we cannot leave it behind because otherwise we get left behind. Virtual learning facilitation was the biggest complaint. They say, oh, um, so many things you cannot do like in a classroom. Well, I dare say that there are so many things you cannot do in a classroom that you can do virtually. For example, in a classroom, can you survey everyone's opinion at the same time? If your classroom is 30 people, almost impossible. You can survey like one person at one time. But if I were to ask you, and there's 40 people in a virtual classroom, and I say, okay, what do you think of this idea? Type into the text chat now. And 40 people type into the text chat. And within one minute, you get 40 different opinions that you can choose from. 40 different opinions for you to, to read from. And you can actually check whether they understood it the correct way or not. So in actuality, virtual classroom has advantages Physical classroom has advantage as well. All you need to know is learn how to use it well. So this is what my teacher taught me. Don't worry about what you cannot do. Focus on what you can do. So when we talk about virtual facilitation, let's I'll wait for you to turn it off. Charles, Charles, if you can see me, you can please turn it off. Yes, I'm yes, yes, with you. Is it off yet? Okay, I can hear you. Thank you very much. No, no, your microphone is on, Charles, so we're hearing your background noise. Oh, background noise, is it, huh? Yeah. Okay. So you have to mute your, your, your microphone. Len? Um, Len? Danny, help out. <laughs> Danny, this is microphone. Us, Ma, Ma. All right. Ma. So, while Charles is doing that, uh, Danny, tanda mute that. These are some of the challenges you face online. And what happens is, if you panic, as an instructor, as a teacher, as a lecturer, as a trainer, your participants will panic as well. So whatever happens, worst case scenarios, take it easy, stay calm, relax, and just continue. The show must must go on. Because you can never get it perfect. Just like a classroom, you can never get it perfect. So there are new challenges. And I'd say, if you are someone who looks forward to challenges, these new challenges are fun. I had one of my friends who teaches Quran. Uh, 
Charles, your microphone is still on. So then you have to either mute him or Charles will have to learn how to mute himself. One of my friends teaches Quran, mengaji online, and he was doing it over Facebook Live. Suddenly, Facebook Live did not work. He stayed calm. He went into the, the WhatsApp group and he says, guys, it looks like Facebook is not cooperating with us today. So let's move this class to WhatsApp. Very calmly, very relaxed, very composed, without panicking. He says, okay, let's, let's move. And he continued his class over WhatsApp. No problem. The students, the participants don't know what you plan to do. So don't panic because then they know it's not going according to plan. You must always have backup plan above backup plan. What's the worst case scenario? Connection down, re reschedule or postpone. That's the worst case scenario. Not, not cancel, but postpone. So you must have the ability to be very, very versatile. At the same time, you must have good tools and equipment as well. So welcome to today's topic, which is virtual facilitation. The first question I want to ask you, and I would love for you to interact with me on, uh, on the text chat, okay? So I want to ask you this question. What worries you about virtual facilitation? What is your concern? I'll give you one minute to type into the text chat, okay? Tak payah essay lah panjang-panjang karangan kan? Give me a, a simple answer. And then what I'll do is I will do my best to answer these questions before even going into the topic. Because these are the burning questions you want to know. So I will mute my mic, I will mute my webcam for about one minute, type into the text chat, and I will answer them one by one. All right. Tuan Syed, you said training effectiveness. Can you explain a bit more, please? Because it might mean different things to different people. Mm, okay, everyone know how to chat, can Mr. Charles, you know how to chat. Uh, the other sidebar and your sidebar got chat box, so maybe you can just... Uh, type gets it to Mr. Charles. Uh, what is your the most worries about uh, virtual learning? So you can just uh, type J. So just only. So for Chef Faiz, Chef Faiz, will you will you Chef Faiz? Uh, just write your message in the chat box. Yep. What worries you? Yeah. Uh, what worries you? Alamak, dah tua sekarang. <laughs> What's going on? Okay, so Tuan Syed says, uh, participant involvement, engagement, participant focus. Thank you. What else? Participant to stay focused on the topics. Okay, good. They can just sit in... But not the he, the betul. Itu selalu terjadi, ya, Cik Syed. They can just sit in, but not there. Okay. So now, as we look at this, we see Tuan Syed, we see Chandra Kumar, we see Aini Malik answering, but nobody else is answering. So what do we know? We now have information that there are people sitting there doing nothing, which means that we need to engage them as well. So when you have, when you're training, when you're sitting there, you must also have a, a host or a producer or someone who can help monitor the text chat for you or monitor the, what's the word? Um, monitor their, their presence. So you actually do need to have an assistant. Up until one time, when you are trained enough or you're well experienced enough, you can handle all of it on your own. So A files says participants device not up to date. True, that's also, that's also an issue. Uh, to answer that question is design your course or design your program to the majority lowest common denominator. So, for example, if you know your students are out in the boondocks, out in the, uh, the rural area where there's very little internet connection, then you want to design using a platform that is easiest for them to capture, which is probably WhatsApp or Telegram. And you teach over WhatsApp and Telegram. So some people go like, eh, boleh ke Nazrin? Well, I have a lot of evidence right now. I have my own students. I have my own friends who have taught over WhatsApp. One of them, his name is Zarif Zukafli. He teaches body language over WhatsApp over 10 days. It is an amazing, amazing course. At first, I was also like you. I'm like, boleh ke? Then I paid and I joined his course and I learned body language over WhatsApp. It was amazing. 
Then recently, one of my other students, she taught meditation over WhatsApp for one week and she got rave reviews. People were saying it was a fantastic course. Padahal, WhatsApp sahaja. Good. Not even video call. She never did a video call. She just taught over WhatsApp. So it can be done. All right. I don't see any more other questions, which means everyone else uh, has no concerns or they're not sure what to ask. Ada dua soal. Ada dua sebab je kalau tak ada soalan. Number one, know, know everything already or don't know what to ask. <laughs> okay. Let's talk about what do you need in terms to, to be a good virtual facilitator. And you'll notice I'm not sharing my webcam. There's a reason for that. I'll explain later. Number one, you will need to have tools. So what are these tools? Tools are what connects you to the participants, what engages you with the participants, what helps you to deliver the content with the participants. Number two is teaching methods. You must have teaching methods more important than the tools. My professor, his name is Abdul Karim Alias. He's from USM. He is probably the godfather of e-learning in Malaysia. He says to us, a fool with a tool is still a fool. If you are a teacher, but you have the most expensive cameras, expensive green screen, lah, macam, macam lah, but you cannot teach using it, then there's no difference. If you look at, at social media influencers, who record on a grainy camera or grainy handphone, gerak gerak lagi, and still can get thousands of subscribers, it's because they are interesting. The topic they teach or the topic they're talking about is interesting. People don't actually come for the video editing. They don't actually come for the, for the you know, uh, the tools that you're using. Case in point is Sugu Pavitra, right? Why do people follow her on YouTube? Even though the editing is is not not as good, even though the camera is not as sharp, but it's her. So tools, yes. If she did not have a YouTube account, if she did not have a handphone with a camera, then definitely she will not be able to connect at all. But she does, even the minimum. What she has more is she has the ability to teach or ability to share. People are interested. So between tools and teaching, teaching will be more important. In fact, it's the most important of the three. Third one is technique, and technique is about instructional design. How do you design your course online to make it engaging, to make it interesting, to make it something that people want to stay for physically and mentally and spiritually? Okay, so what questions do you have on these three T's? Please type into the, te the text chat now. If you have no questions, type in N for Nazrin so that I know to move on. If you don't type in anything, then I will stay here until somebody types in anything. So Tuan Said says N. Who else wants to type in N? All right. If you have questions, ask me now. You can turn on your microphone or you can type in the question. So we got 15. I think that counts about 12 people. Only three Ns. It means somebody has a question to ask, so we'll wait for that. Aha, another end. All right, Charles asked, what is common tools? Thank you very much. We're going to come to that right now. Uh, so Charles, there are basically four types of common tools, which is coming up in the next slide. Uh, one of them is video conferencing. The other one is material repository. Next one is engagement tool. Last one is quick response. So we'll come to that. Thank you very, very much. Chandra says, please elaborate more on 3T. We'll do. That's the rest of this <laughs> webinar today. Okay. Any more questions? All righty then. Now, before we talk about tools, we need to understand what is called the spectrum of online learning. Because I just talked about WhatsApp and some people are going, what? WhatsApp? This is not the webinar I came for. Well, unfortunately, when you talk about tools, we have to talk about whether something is how the course is designed. And the course is designed along a spectrum of being facilitator driven. That means it is you, the teacher or the, 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 the facilitator or the trainer who drives the course, who drives the learning versus if it's learner driven. What's the difference between learner and facilitator driven? Well, learner driven is more self-study, belajar sendiri from a course that they can take online. Facilitator driven is usually synchronous, meaning that you are there at the same time with the facilitator. So what are some examples of these? Number one is what we call a podcast, right? My question, type into the text chat, who knows what a podcast is? Y or N? Yes or no? 
who knows what a podcast is? So Tuan Syed says, yes. Anyone else? There's only two choices, Y or N, yes or no. Aha, KK says 50-50. <laughs> All right. If we get a lot of no's, then I will explain what it is. If we get more yeses, then I'll skip over it. Oh. Anyone else? Yes or no? Do you know what a podcast is? Okay, since it's 50-50 right now, a podcast is basically a recorded video, or sorry, a recorded audio, and you can listen to a podcast live, or you can listen to a podcast recorded. Some podcasts are run from a radio studio, but in the modern world, more podcasts are actually run from a laptop. They usually are one person talking about their subject matter expertise, whether it be making money or meditation or whatever, okay? So if you're not sure what this is, go and Google podcast and you will find out more. But basically, I want you to imagine like a radio show. Sometimes people are interviewing or being interviewed and that podcast gets recorded and put online where you can download and listen to. So a lot of people listen to podcasts. Podcasts are like audio books, right? Except that they, are, they tend to be one-off. So go and Google podcast and you know what I mean. BFM, which is a radio station I, I, I love because it, it has a lot of good content. They have a web page full of their podcasts. So whenever they interview someone over radio, they will record it and they will put it onto their website. So that's a podcast. But if you notice, it's very facilitator driven. It is not learner driven at all, which means you cannot interact with the facilitator. You cannot ask questions. Next is what we call a chat class. And this is where I gave you the example of WhatsApp, right? Uh, chat, chat class, I know the words there is texting, but actually you can do a lot more. You can do voice, you can do calls. Now WhatsApp can do up to four, and eight, can do up to eight people in a group, on a group call. Soon they're going to expand it to 50. And you know, I don't know what the limit can be uh, for WhatsApp, but so far only eight. But the plan is to go 50 and also to merge with Facebook so you can actually have cross cross platform functionality with chat classes you have the functions of all the chat the chat platform if it's telegram you can actually store stuff in videos in there you can actually do uh, voice calls you can do voice messages you can do short videos and you can also do pictures and that's how zarif taught us body language by putting a picture in and asking us okay what do you think of this person what do you think his his body language message is sending and we all would type in our answers and he would he would give us okay this is correct this is correct this is correct and this is the actual answer in the beginning i was very skeptical but after a while i'm like this is cool because i can actually go back and revise that chat class group is still there after two years and i i'm still revising i'm still learning new things as we go along even though the trainer is no longer there even though my classmates are all silent right but I'm still there and I can still relearn. This next one is what you're more familiar with. It is what you, you think of when we, we talk about online learning, which is virtual classes and webinars. So a virtual class or webinar requires video conferencing tools. You must have a webcam, you must have the ability to speak, you must have the ability to share slides. Otherwise, uh, it doesn't come this far. It goes, it's, it strays into chat class or podcast. Next, we have what we call a recorded class. And a recorded class is a class that was recorded virtually, which means right now we are doing synchronous. You and I are on at the same time. But if you notice, Danny is recording this session, which means that there will be people out there who's watching this recording. Hi, guys. For those who are watching the recording, why are you not here with us? <laughs> the recorded class is nothing more than just a live class recorded, stored, or sent. So usually it can be on YouTube or you know, uh, any other video, video platform, but there is no interaction. Right now, I can interact with you because you are in the text chat. If you turn on your webcam, you turn on your microphone, we can interact some more. What you see there as a second layer, a material repository, what is that? It is a store where you keep all of your materials for the participants to access. So think of Google Cloud or OneDrive. So these are material repositories where you say, okay, uh, please download the workbook from this link before you start the class, yeah? Okay, 
So here's the link. So you need to have one space where you can keep everything. As we move to being more and more learner-driven, you notice that there is less and less facilitator-driven here. Starting from recorded class, okay, it is now the onus on the learner, the participant, the person who wants to learn, they have to take initiative, they have to take action, but now they can do it anytime they want. Because if it was a virtual class or a webinar, they have to attend at that time only. Otherwise, they'll miss it. But from recorded class onwards, they can start learning whenever they want. They have the luxury of time. They also need to be motivated to do this. So the next one is what we call a MOOC. Let's test in the text chat. Who knows what a MOOC is? Yes or no? Y or N? I'm not asking if you're expert or familiar. I want to know if you've ever heard of it before. Okay, a lot of no's. All right. If you Google MOOC later on, a MOOC stands for Massive Open Online Course. And it started in 1990s when universities in the United States started putting their university courses online for people to study for free. And that has, has become a huge movement across the planet. In Malaysia, all Malaysian universities now host their courses online on a, on a platform called openlearning.com. Uh, when I was lecturing at UIA, I also had the opportunity to put my courses on, online my, and in the form of a MOOC. So a MOOC requires what is called an LMS or a learning management system. Now think of a learning management system as like a membership, members only website where you log in and you get to choose what course you want to learn. Now, let's benchmark this. Who knows what Coursera is? Who has heard of this word Coursera? Yes or no? Yes, there we go. Yes. So Coursera, Udemy, Skillshare, um, what else is that? EDX. All of these are actually MOOCs. They started out as a MOOC site. But now it's become more public and people can learn anything in there, not just university courses. You can learn hypnosis, how to get a girlfriend. I'm like, what? <laughs> so now public, even the public can, can run their courses on these platforms. But you have to pay, of course. Okay, As a, as a teacher, you have to pay. Uh, but if you get a lot of students, then they pay you. Lah. So that's a learning management system. Now, even more advanced than a learning management system is what we call an LXP, or a learning experience platform. Now, you and I might not have the money to be able to subscribe to this because LXPs are expensive and they tend to be targeted only for organizations or corporations. Because a whole LXP, what it does is it has an AI, an artificial intelligence embedded in there to help you study, to help you stay motivated. What is, what is the function of the LXP? I want you to think of YouTube, right? If you are on YouTube a lot, if you're on Facebook a lot, have you noticed this? They tend to be able to predict what you want to know, what you want to see, what you want to read. You mentioned to your friend, hey, I want to go and buy Sabon Fab today. Suddenly on Facebook, you get an advert for Sabon Fab. How is that possible? Well, because it gathers a lot of big data, including your microphone, your camera. It knows what you're doing. That's the, that's a scary part. And it builds that in. The algorithm calculates what you need, when you need it, and it pulls up an advert for you. YouTube is the same. If you skip over certain videos, the algorithm recognizes, oh, Nazrin doesn't like this video. Therefore, I shall stop showing more of these videos. Oh, Nazrin likes these videos. He clicks on this. He stays for the whole video. So I shall recommend more videos of this type to him. Now, I want you to imagine all of that power, all of that AI, but into a learning management system. So it can actually understand what you do know, what you don't know. The LXP will suggest, please learn this. Please take this course. Yeah, recommended for you. And it's not as a, a, a simple, it's not someone, a human being doing this. It's actually the, the, the AI, the artificial intelligence. All right. Before we move on to more specific topic on tools, tell me what questions you have. I'll give you only 15 seconds. If I don't see a question in the text chat, then I will move on. However, if you don't have questions, tell me right now and give me an end so we don't waste your time. What questions do you have based on the spectrum of online learning? 10 seconds.
one. Okay, well done. Now, let's talk about the actual tools we're going to be using. Number one, there, there are four types. The first type you must have, uh, if you want to, to run a virtual class at least, not a chat class, is video conferencing. Number two, you must have a material repository, some place to store all of your workbooks, all of your slides, all of your PDFs, all of the links you want them to visit, all of the videos you want them to watch. And then, this is a bit optional, engagement tools. What tools can you use online that, that can help engage the participants? Are there websites where they can play games? Are there websites where they can do quizzes or polls? What do you use? In most cases, it is not software sitting on your laptop. It is third-party tools that are, you know, uh, on a website somewhere, usually free. And last but not least is a quick response or Q&A tool. So let's go through one by one. Video conferencing right now, very hot, is MS Teams. If you're not familiar with MS Teams, you better learn because if a client asks you to use it you and you're stuck without it, you need to be able to master and move around with it. Some people complain about MS Teams, cannot do breakout rooms. La. Well, the fact is MS Teams do have the, the functionality of breakout rooms. Uh, it's called channels. At the same time, uh, Microsoft is updating a lot now. They, I think they've recently released a learning package for MS Teams so that it makes it easier for you to, to use them. But they still have a problem, you see. They, uh, something I, like, I don't like about, about MS Teams is you cannot see everyone at the same time if they turn on their, their webcams. So far, it's limited to four people. So if you have 20 participants, you can only see four, while the other 16, you can't see at all. Second is Skype. I really should remove Skype from the slide because it's getting very outdated. Nobody uses it much anymore. But in the 19, I think early 2000s, Skype was used a lot by teachers to teach for tuition, to teach language. It was quite effective because that was the only tool they had. So a lot of people still use Skype because it's the simplest tool out there. But it doesn't have a lot of the functionalities of our friend Zoom. So Zoom has the ability to mute participants. You can do put them into breakout rooms. You can actually pre-register them. And if you go through the Zoom website, you can actually see how long a participant stayed in your class because Zoom records all of that information. But if you do just a public link, okay, everyone can join this link, it does not do that. If you do a registration, where they have to register in the Zoom site, then you get more data. Adik beradik to Zoom is WebEx. So WebEx is pretty similar to Zoom. Uh, so similar, in fact, that uh, WebEx is by a company called Cisco. Zoom was founded by an ex-Cisco employee. So uh, you, can, you can draw your conclusions from there. Lah. And of course, what we're doing today, Google Meet. So each and every one of these tools has their pros, has their cons. Google Meet right now is by far the cheapest option because it's free, totally free for as long as you want because Google really wants to dominate this market. Okay, questions on video conferencing, please ask me now. I'm only going to give you 10 seconds before I move on to material repository. Aha, thank you very much. Let's move on to material repository. You can use Google Drive. You can use OneDrive. You can use, uh, you know, many others. My favorite, the one I'm using for all my courses right now is Google Classroom. Danny, if you can help me out, type in the, the text chat, the names of these tools. The first one is Google Classroom. If you are not using it, I recommend that you check it out. The only downside of Google Classroom, there's only three. Number one is that only participants with a Gmail or Yahoo account can access uh, this, this, this uh, website. And then number two is, as they send in their assignments, and if the assignments are big, like videos and stuff like that, uh, into Google Classroom, it takes up your Google Drive space. So if you're using Google Drive, you need to, to uh, buy some space. So I bought space for a year, which is 100, mega, 100 gigabytes, uh, and that's been serving me quite well. All right. So what questions do you have so far? All good? Hi, Danny. Hi. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so far, semua orang okay. Okay. So next one, Microsoft Teams, which also can serve as a material repository. In fact, it is more, what's the word? Combine lah. Because you can use MS Teams for video conferencing and material repository as well. So it's all in one place. 
but it, but for now I use Zoom and Google Classroom, so it's actually separated spaces. Third one is OpenLearning.com. See, so OpenLearning.com is a, uh, an LMS. It's a MOOC site from Australia, but doing very well in Malaysia. Their head office is in Malaysia right now. Their CEO is Adam Brimo, his whose office is in KL Central. Now, out of all of the learning management systems that you can use as an independent freelance trainer, Google, uh, uh, sorry, open learning is by far the cheapest and the easiest to use. At about a hundred ringgit a month, unlimited, oh, sorry, not unlimited, hundred ringgit a month up to 250 students at one time. Now, open learning is not video conferencing. It is a space where you can run, you can store your self-learning courses. And I'll give you one example. <clears throat> Who knows this name, Nobisha? Type in yes or no. Who knows this name, Nobisha? Aha, ID says Nobisha Kenal. Eh? Heard of. Okay, Nobisha is a HR practitioner in Malaysia, very active on Twitter, and he he's, he's very well known in terms of, of uh, HR practice. His name is, oh, I can't remember his name. Eh? Nobisha. N-O stands for his name. B-I is Bin. Uh, Sha is his last name. So, Nobisha has a course on open learning. It's a self-learning course. It's a HR certification. He sells it for 30 ringgit. So if you want to go study, you go and study there for 30 ringgit. Guess how many students he has? He has 1,000 students. 1,000 students times 30 ringgit. Some of you are going, uh. <laughs> So 100 ringgit a month is nothing if you want to, to, to uh, put your course there. But you see, the good thing is Nobisha already has social media presence. People know him. So whenever he markets his stuff, people immediately go and sign up. But that is not impossible for any of us. We can certainly do it. Next one is one of my favorites. If I'm running a long course, like say a four-week course, like what I'm doing right now, I tend to use Google Classroom because I can put in a lot of material in there that's structured. But if I'm running a short course, like one, one week, three day, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or even like a two day course, then what I do is I use Padlet, P-A-D-L-E-T. I want you to go and check it out. Padlet is like notepads, like post-it notes, where you can create several different post-its inside this website, and you can actually give the link to your participants. They can actually go and write in there as well. So it's also a collaborative engagement tool. That being said, let's come to the... Okay, uh, Cik Nadrin, how to yes. spell? How to spell? P-A-D? Ah, Saya say dah nak tulis lah. Oh, Padlet. <laughs> okay. Alright, never heard. We try. Well, it is amazing. It's a beautiful, beautiful tool. It's colourful. Google Classroom tak colourful. That's the problem. They're single colour saja. But wow. Padlet is very colourful. So go and check it out, guys, later on. Engagement tool. So some people are like, how do I engage my participants? Well, you want to try this one. Kahoot. Somebody who knows Kahoot, please spell Kahoot in the text chat. Complete with the exclamation mark. <laughs> Complete with the exclamation mark. Allah. <laughs> Tuan Syed, boleh menang lagi tu. Okay, Chandra, Chandra won. I'm so sorry. Dia menang dulu. So what is Kahoot? It is a quiz tool that you can use to, uh, you know, create excitement. There's music. There is uh, time limits. There is leaderboard to see who who got the answer fastest, who got who got more points, uh, and and kids love that. They are using it in schools and university right now. Uh, only downside is you must have a good internet connection for you to be able to play this. Next to Kahoot is what we call Mentimeter. Who knows Mentimeter? Type into the text chat. Mentimeter. Mentimeter is adik beradik to Kahoot but it is a lot more powerful because you can actually present. You can actually do presentations from Mentimeter. Uh, so, and I recommend that you check out Kahoot, you check out Mentimeter. The, the, the only thing about Ment uh, Kahoot now is berbayar lah. You have to pay for it. You can only have a limited amount of Kahoots and so with Mentimeter. I think you can only have three Mentees at one time. You can only have, you can set up only three quizzes at one time. But there's one more, which I don't, ha I don't have on this slide. I'm going to type into the text chat. It's called quizzes. And quizzes, ah, quizzes boleh ke, 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 yes. Quizzes boleh. Quizzes is uh, free right now and it's colorful and it's a lot more powerful than Mentimeter. The last one there is Padlet again. You can use Padlet as an engagement tool. 
especially if you give them the link and they can all write in at the same time. Last but not least, I recommend that you have a Q&A or quick response tool. Why? Here's the thing about engagement. Yeah? The problem with engaging with participants is sometimes they're shy, they don't want to ask questions. But there are some types of participants and I am one of those types. I think too hard, I want to understand everything, but I will wait until after the course ends, then I will understand. Then I have questions to ask. By then, it's too late to ask. So if I run a course, like say a one-week course or one-month course, I maintain a uh, WhatsApp group where they can ask questions at any time. And this helps them feel safe. It helps them feel safe enough to, to know that, okay, I don't have to panic. If I have a question, I can always ask later. All right. Ask your questions now about tools so we can move on. If you have no questions, you know what to do. Give me an end. Um, how about Google Form? Does it help? Google Form, you can use for engagement, but more often it's for assessment. When you want to give them tests, you want to test their knowledge, then you use Google Forms or Microsoft Forms. Uh, I don't put that here because what, I'm, what I have here are benda-benda wajib that you must have if you're running a virtual class. So okay. Google Forms falls into the assessment category, which is not wajib lah. It's good to have. But you see, uh, Padlet kena bayar. Uh, Padlet tak bayar-bayar, you get three, tiga. You get three free pads. After that, kena bayar. But they also have a, they have like an affiliate program where if you invite other people to join Padlet, you get one Padlet per person. So if you invite 20 people, then they give you 20 free Padlets. See? Pandai, eh? <laughs> uh, I don't know if that scheme is still there. Uh, but look at the pricing. It's very, very cheap. A lot of lecturers pay for it. A lot, 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 lot of lecturers use it. So I'm, I'm happy to say that Padlet is, for the price that you pay, it has, uh, it's fun. It's, it has a lot of functionalities. I used Padlet once when I was training UIA lecturers. There were, if I remember right, 200, 300 of them in the, in the hall at the same time. So imagine, how do I survey all of them at the same time? I cannot. And this is live, face-to-face. -face, eh? It's not virtual. So everybody had their phone connected to the university Wi-Fi. And I asked one question, and they all answered on Padlet. That was amazing to see 200 answers there. And you could actually survey and choose on screen. It was projected on the screen. Everybody can see it at the same time. Uh, Tuan Said says, use paid pad Metimeter before. Very good for engagement. I agree. I agree. So I'm going to say something right now, guys, because a lot of trainers come to me and say, hey, which are free tools that I can use? Huh? If you are a professional, right, then it is your responsibility to invest in some tools. Some of us have bought projectors. Some of us have bought props. Some of us have bought games, right? So it is the same when we're doing virtual. If you are a professional, then you need to have professional tools. And professional, these people are also running a business. Padlet is also running a business. Menti is also running a business. You are also running a business. So invest in some. And the ones that you, I recommend you invest are already here on this slide. Um, Google Classroom is free, but Google Drive, you have to pay for the space. MS Teams, as long as uh, the client is inviting you, that means the client is inviting you into their MS team. So you don't actually have to pay anything. Open Learning, 100 ringgit a month. Padlet, I think, 20, 20 ringgit a month or something like that. So yes, pay. <laughs> All right, thank you for that. Now to answer some questions about engagement pula. When we talk about you, the teacher, you need to understand what engagement mode you are in. What do I call an engagement mode? It is four different modes where you are in either collaboration versus control mode. Now, I have named them SAGE as the first one. The SAGE, if you've ever been to a webinar like today, today I'm in SAGE mode. Because why? We're not interacting as much, but we are chat, text chatting here and there. Whenever you ask a question, I answer the question on the spot. So the direction of today is determined by you and me, right? The second one is what I call a facilitator. A facilitator, if you notice, there are some people who, okay, let's do an activity right now, virtually. And 
there is more collaboration between you and and uh, the facilitator but this time the facilitator has more control they know where they want to take you a sage is mostly ceramah and khutbah only yeah but you have to be there and you have, you have to ask questions so if you imagine a webinar where it's only q and a that's it only q and a then that is mostly sage today i'm mixing a bit of sage a bit of facilitator a lot of teacher and teacher is now i'm controlling more of your understanding i want to know what you want to know i i ask questions for you to interact with me i give you instructions okay you have no questions give me an end and uh, have you noticed some people even before i ask they have now managed to put an end what does that mean it means that i have already given you a benchmark you know what to do now Said tadi tak sempat saya tanya dia dah end dah. Saya oh, okay because I know what my teacher wants me to do. But right at the end of the spectrum is what we call instructor. Now if you have heard people t- telling you don't put too much bullet points on the slide. Use only pictures. Use only diagrams. Don't use don't use uh, too many words. Right. Well, some of you go hey, that's good, but I cannot make it work, and I don't know why. Well, it's probably because of the design of what you're teaching. If you are teaching oil and gas, if you're teaching finance, if you're teaching SOPs, you cannot be in sage mode. Because if you're in sage mode, okay, everyone. In the manner of safety and health, I want you to remember it is all your responsibility. So you must decide. All right, thank you, everyone. Let's go home. You will have accidents. You will have death because you are in sage mode. Instructor mode is okay, everyone. I want you to do it like this. Eh? Step one, macam ni. Step two, macam ni. Step three. Do not change this. If you change this, I will kill you. If you don't die, I will kill you first. Okay. So please pay attention and follow step by step by step. My question. Let me ask you guys. If you were teaching a course on baking online, how to make a cake. Tell me which mode you would use: sage, facilitator, teacher, or instructor. Tell me the text chat now. What do you think? If you were teaching a course virtually online on baking, how to bake a cake, what would you do? Don't say cutter sage. Okay, anyone else? Cake is cutter instructor. Cake is I don't know what your real name is. Can you tell me why you chose instructor? <laughs> so I get the AI. That's what I want to be. Can you tell me why? Why you choose instructor? Why not sage? Why not facilitator? So kalau kena kick facilitator pun okay. <laughs> okay, let me put an image into your head. Who is this guy? Uh, Hell's Kitchen. Who's the chef? What's his name? Chef Ramsey, is Chef Ramsey in sage mode, or facilitator, or teacher, or instructor? What does he demand? Instructor. Why instructor? Because if you get it wrong, <laughs> ko masak salah, ko buat cake salah, tak jadi ko, he kill you. So, actually, if you want to teach cooking, you can use teacher mode, because teacher mode. Does not have does not focus on so much control, but if you want to teach baking, okay, anybody who's baked before will know. If you miss measure butter or flour by 50 grams or 100 grams, salah ukur, your cake will not rise or your cake tak jadi or it gets burnt or worse. So instructor mode is for when you want to get compliance, when you want to teach someone how to do something from scratch, then you use instructor mode. For example, when you teach mathematics, you cannot use sage mode if you want them to follow step by step how to get it done. So you have to ask yourself, right? What mode are you in? What mode do you need to be in your virtual class? If you're running a Q and A, then you do sage. And here's the thing about about saging, right? Turn on your webcam. Spend more time with your webcam on, and less slides and less words or no words at all on your slides. Instructor, no webcam at all, unless you're demonstrating something. No webcam at all. Focus on the slides and the content of the slides, 
and focus on everybody, everybody's compliance, how they do when they do. Now, you'll also notice that when you are in instructor mode, answer this question for me. Okay? Tell me in, this, uh, in the text chat right now, how many people can you have when you're running Sage mode? How many people can you have running instructor mode? Give me a number. Uh, instructor, berapa orang dalam kelas? Sage, berapa orang dalam kelas? Tell, tell me the text chat from your own ideas. What do you think? Okay, Sage can be more than 40. Thank you. Instructor, 20. Chandra, can you manage 20 people without a facilitator uh, helping you to make sure that everybody manages to get it correct? If the answer is yes, then that's good. You can, you have the ability to do that. The, the diff <laughs> see, difficult. So the recommendation for instructor is seven and below. For Sage, there is no recommendation because Tony Robbins has run a webinar for 500,000 people before, half a million people. So Sage, there's not actually a lot of, of uh, uh, what's the word, uh, no issues there. Lah. So if you want the number, I'll give you the numbers right now. Instructor, seven and below. Teacher, eight to 16. Oh, sorry, eight to 15. Did I get that right? Eight to... Yeah, uh, seven and below. And then teacher is eight to 16. And then facilitator is 17 to 24 people. Now, these are recommendations and they're not real. These are to make life easy for you. But if you have a co-facilitator to help you out, if you have many facilitators to help out with the, their breakout rooms, their groups, then you can manage a lot of people. So you become the guru basala. You become the principal of that virtual course. And you can safely uh, sage for some parts, and then the participants can, uh, sorry, your co-facilitators can help manage the smaller breakout rooms. Okay, so you have to ask yourself, what is the mode that you're in? Now, we're going to talk about how do you actually engage. Here is my recommendation based on what my teachers have taught me uh, it, when I was at a, a, a virtual facilitator in, since 2011. I made mistakes. I did not listen to what they said. I put bantai saja, and it did not work. So I decided, okay, I better listen to them. What do they recommend? They recommend that before the course starts, you actually have pre-work. Now, pre-work is dangerous because a lot of people don't do pre-work. So what we do is we actually have a WhatsApp group. Now, it can be anything. It can be a WhatsApp group, can be an email chain, can be a Padlet, doesn't matter. But you want to collect them together in one place and monitor them through the pre-work. So right now, I'm running a four-week course, and this is week one. So today is Friday. It is day four of week one, which is the, the prep week. No classes yet. No slides. We're just chit-chatting dalam WhatsApp. Monday, the first day of the, the, the prep, I release task one. So they had to do task one. They have a deadline until end of Tuesday. Wednesday, I release task two. And task two is actually getting them to go into Google Classroom, familiarize themselves with where everything is, where all the slides are, where all the meeting links are for the, for the two weeks, where all the assignments are, okay, where all of the resources, reading materials, videos, PDFs, where all of them are, and how to submit the assignments. Because Google Classroom has the ability, has uh, an area, where you can submit your assignments, whether it be a link, a document, or a video. So how do I do this? I don't know if you experience this, but when I when I joined university, um, we have this Ta'aruf week. <laughs> UIA had this Ta'aruf week. I think everywhere else, they call it an orientation. Uh, UM calls it a Minggu Haluan Siswa. Minggu Siswa Haluan Siswa. <laughs> Tell me what, what it was in your university. What did they call it? Was it orientation? Was it Haluan Siswa? I need to know. I want to learn. In my university or Islamic university, uh, they call it Minggu Ta'aruf. Ta'aruf week, which is getting to know each other. You got orientasi. Okay. Mine, because UIA did not have uh, ragging, so it was pretty boring. <laughs> We're not as fun as, say, UM. UM had cheers and all of that stuff. We had none of that. But what we did have was on the very first day of orientation, they broke us up into groups and they gave us a treasure hunt. 
I hope you know what a treasure hunt is. They gave us a treasure hunt and all of the checkpoints was all of the most important places in the university. So we had to go to the clinic. We had to go to admissions and records. We had to go to student affairs. We had to go to the lecture rooms. We had to go to the lecture halls. We had to go to the lecturer uh, offices. We had to go to the masjid. We had to go to the canteens. By the time we finished our treasure hunt, we knew the campus very well. That was amazing because imagine if they give you a briefing instead. Okay, everybody, please look at this slide. This is a map of the campus. Over here is the clinic. So if you're sick, go here. No, no, no. Instead of giving us a map, they actually had us run through the whole campus, literally. And I'm happy to say that my team won. <laughs> we got first place. We, we actually thought we were last because nobody was there. And the checkpoint guy was surprised. Hey, you're here already? He said, yeah. Or oh, you're the first to arrive. Oh, fantastic. So what we do in Google Classroom is I give them activities for them to complete in Google Classroom. And one, one I love to give them is I hide pictures of kittens. So, so don't be surprised. It has to be fun. Inside Google Classroom, inside the documents, inside the folders, I hide pictures of kittens. And I hide five kittens. All of them look similar. They're the same color. But I say, I want only this kitten. Go and find the name of this kitten, which is the name of that thick picture. And the name, I'll tell you right now, because you're not in my class, the name of the picture is Steve or Steve Rogers, Captain America. All the others are Natasha. I think the other one is Bruce. Uh, I think the other one is Clint. Okay. So when they run through Google Classroom within this week, they're supposed to finish it by today. Today is the, is the, the day they finish that run through. When they do that, they now have a better idea of what the, the classroom is, what the material repository is. Then, what I do before the class starts, so class will start on Monday at 9 p.m. Malam, because this is a public course and they're all professionals. So they cannot study in the daytime. Class starts at 9 p.m. At 8.30 p.m. or about 8.20, I go into the WhatsApp group and I go, Hi guys, thank you very much. We're going to have our class tonight and tonight we'll be talking about this and this and this and this and this. So very excited tone, I type into the text chat. And then I go, okay, who, who, who will be joining us tonight? Say I. Sekali one person say I. Two person say I. Three people say I. And then pause. Nothing. Okay. It looks like there's only going to be four of us tonight. So when the four of us are going to have fun. Then suddenly everybody, oh, I, 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 because oh, Nazrin actually wants an answer. So what are we doing? We are creating an environment where the participants go, oh, he notices lah. He knows lah. So if you notice today, I've been doing a little bit. I've been asking you to type into the text chat. So I actually know who's active and who's not active. Who is sitting there doing nothing, just listening, and who is typing in and engaging with me. So if you run a long course, you get to identify. Keep notes. Just like you do in a real classroom, keep notes of who are the people who are active and who are the people who are inactive. And the inactive ones, sometimes I message them, I give them a call and I ask them if there's anything okay. Uh, and some of you are thinking, Alamak, banyak kerja. Well, the answer is yes. Virtual facilitation is a lot more work, but it's also a lot more direct engagement than in a classroom. And I discovered some of them have issues. Um, last month, we had three people, family members passed away. So one of them actually got kidnapped and murdered. Brother was kidnapped and murdered, came out in the news and everything. Uh, so you get to know them very, very personally. And they say, I'm sorry, I haven't been active in the WhatsApp group or in the class. I will do my best. And, and what I do is I say, relax, okay, go ahead. All I needed to do is you're there, that's all. I, 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 I was wondering whether you were okay or not. And that builds that bond, okay? Now, when you, you, you actually run the class, how I normally do it, I say, I'm in teacher mode a lot. And teacher mode focuses on turning off the webcam and using a radio voice. So if you notice what I've been doing <laughs> this last one hour is I've been using a radio voice. If you talk to me personally, face to face, I don't, I, don't, I don't talk like this. But because this is the only way I can interact and engage with you, this is how I do it. And last but not least, give simple activities. Do not give complex activities online. Virtually, it's very difficult to run complex activities because people get confused. So do not. My recommendation is you give them simple activities to do. 
And what are some examples of simple activities? Let's try one. Here's my request. Everyone here, I want, if you're on your phone, I want your thumb ready to type into the text chat. If you're on the laptop, I want your hands on the keyboard ready to type it. I am going to show you a picture, okay? And when you see the picture, immediately after you see the picture, please type in your first response or your first impression. The first thing that comes to mind, type thrust. Can I get that commitment? If you say yes, type in Y that you're ready. There we go. Now, have you noticed how fast people are typing Y so far? <laughs> okay. I'm going to show you the picture. As soon as you see the picture, type in your first impression. Ready, set, go. Only three people so far. Keep going, keep going. Some of you are still thinking. No thinking. Type in immediately. <laughs> All right. I can tell that there are some people who have seen this picture. Some of you actually use this in your training. Uh, what I'm demonstrating to you here is you don't actually need to have software or tools to engage your participants or to run activities. All I'm using is just a slide with pictures. And I use this in my critical thinking course to ask the question to, to my participants, did you jump to a conclusion? There are some of us here who know this picture, so they did not, did not jump to a conclusion because they had background information. For those of you who did not have background information, we, we judge based on what we see, right? And today in 2020, we have an issue in social media. We tend to judge from what we see without gathering information first. And if you do that, then you don't have critical thinking ability. If that is a habit, then you want to slowly remove that habit to develop more critical thinking. And that's an example right there. Okay, make sense? Okay, let's try something else. Danny, do we still have time? Because I think we started late. Huh? Yeah, Danny? we started. We started late. Uh, just want to see other people. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, do you guys okay? You want to continue or? Um, all right. Then I'll I only have one more slide to go and then okay. we're done. All right. Okay. So let's try one last thing. Everybody grab a pen and paper, empty piece of paper and a pen. And if you have it, please type in ready. <laughs> grab a pen and a piece of paper. And when you're done, when you're ready, type in ready. We're going to do a drawing activity. R. <laughs> Only one R so far. Okay. Let's get at least four people. Danny, do you have a piece of paper and pen ready? Yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> dah belum, belum kan? Ah, belum lagi, belum lagi. Baru empat orang. Okay. Okay, so we got a minimum of four people. Let's go. I'm going to show you a scribble. Please draw the scribble on that piece of paper. Sejibik, sejibun, as is. Tell me when you're done. Type in done. All right. All right. Good. One more at least. Okay. Next step. I want you to add in details to this drawing and turn it into a different picture. Okay, tambah-tambah lah, you coret-coret lagi lah to make it into a different picture. I'll give you 15 seconds to do this. Ready? Go. Okay, good. Now, this is a creativity test. It tests, it doesn't test you as a creative person. It only takes a snapshot of how creative you are right now. Okay, and I, I do this in my creativity classes. So it's fun when, when, you're, when you, you're doing it face-to-face -face because then you get to show your drawings to other people. Uh, but online, what we can do is I, I give you a grading, right? Now, I want you to grade yourself. If you drew a bird 
of any species. I don't care. Penguin ke, burung terbang ke, itik ke, I don't care. If you draw a bird of any species, give yourself one star. If you drew a face with a hat, a human face or someone's face wearing a hat, also give yourself one star. But if you drew something other than a bird or a face with a hat, give yourselves two stars. Selain daripada burung atau orang pakai topi, give yourself two stars. Okay, now, for three stars, give yourself three stars if you added on so much detail or you added on detail in such a weird way that you cannot even see the original line anymore. Yeah, that original line has merged, has disappeared into the picture. Give yourself three stars. Anyone got three stars? No. Okay. So today we got one and twos. Three stars means you are very relaxed. You have nothing else to do today. You lepak lepak saja today. Um, the rest of you, I suspect you have work, you have meetings, you have webinars to go to today. I could be wrong, uh, but most of the time that's the case. So it's not about you as a creative person. It's about how creative you are right now. And the measure of that is whether you're thinking of something else, whether you're multitasking at the same time as you are in this webinar. So that takes us to the end of today. Please ask me what questions you that I have not answered yet. What would you like to know? In the meantime, I pass it back to Danny. Danny, anything you want to share? Okay, this is the the last slide, right, Chinasri? Yep. Okay, so we will end up soon. Um, uh, before that, anyone want to ask Chinasri Q and A session right now? Uh, maybe you can on your mind, Mr. Charles. You want to ask anything? Said Panuraini for the last one. Ada siapa nak tanya? Kalau tak ada siapa nak tanya, um, biar Dani tanya. Okay. Okay. So far Dani dah conduct a few class uh, online kan Cik Nazrin? Okay. Um, some, of, some of the trainer that I see is like they are really struggling to engage the client. The, 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 the part is not really nice if uh, we have an in-house, right? So uh, we can see everyone open the camera right now. And then you, you can see like the trainer is like talking and doing some uh, presenting, but the participant in the background sometimes can uh, chat, chat with the member as well. Sometimes can like just on the phone, um, but then listen to the trainer. So if let's say got 20 to 25 packs people in the class, so. If the trainer can see the participant macam tu, is it actually affected the trainer in MC or how? Because okay. I'm like sorry for the trainer lah. Hmm. So number one, as an educator, you need to manage your own emotions. That's your responsibility. As an educator, you need to manage your own emotions. Remember why you're doing this. If you're doing this for the money, you get frustrated. If you're doing this to be well-known, you're going to get frustrated. One of the things my teachers taught me is that you are not there to make them like you. Whether it be classroom or whether it be virtual. If you go there and you risau, you worry whether they like me or not, um, you are not going to do well. Because then you are focused on getting their uh, approval. What you must do is flip it the other way around. If I was a student in my class, what would I like to see? So you must engage more. You must be excited more. And I can, I, 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 let me ask right now. Let me ask the participants who are sitting in here right now. You have not turned on your webcam, right? But I'd like to know, um, what do you think of the session so far? I cannot see you, but it's not important for me to see you. Why? Because some you tak pakai tudung lah, macam-macam kan? So it's not important for me to see you. But my question, have you been smiling? Have you been laughing along with us as well? So please tell me in the text chat. We won't know until you tell us. And I don't know. And I don't care. What I do is I do my best. Okay? And the rest, we leave it to God. You do your best and you will get the people who you intend to target. But if you go, Hello, hello? Are you listening? 
then you create an atmosphere where people don't want to learn. So create a safe atmosphere, create an atmosphere where people want to actually listen there and say, eh, kejap, kejap, bang, bang, kejap, I tengah webinar ni, bang. <laughs> you can actually have uh, that want. Eh, menarik ni, I, I need to pay attention. Tapi I malu nak type text chat, so I diam je lah. Doesn't matter to the trainer. If you really doing this for the right reasons, then you focus on engaging them. Now, one hour webinar is going to be difficult, right? But if you run a long course, like a one week course, then you slowly build rapport with them. Where do I build my report in the one week before in the WhatsApp group? So that's, you need to have that preparation. And I'm telling you, if you do that well, that WhatsApp group or that pre, pre work very well, 80% of your engagement issues disappear. Does that answer the question? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So the problems usually crop up when you do webinars because there's no, there's no rapport with the participants and then you do ice breaking. Webinar sejam, ice breaking 15 minutes, habislah. <laughs> you, 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 you effectively have 45 minutes left. So that's why all ice breaking, all rapport building, I do before the class starts within the WhatsApp group. And I, I, I have, if anybody asks me for a recommendation, I say that's it. That's the best one so far I've done. I have not found anything better than that. Before the class, build rapport with them first. I see. Right. Okay. I hope so, that um, the yeah. Uh, okay. Before that, Cik Narvin, okay, maybe I, uh, on behalf of other trainers also, uh, as well, asking you about the, like, some of courses will be a technical courses. Like, yep. um, um, majority, the, the one that you said is apply for maybe soft skills or some, like, general courses. Like, mm -hmm. if they for technical courses, like, if later the trainer have a something a practical tools to demo on how actually it works in okay. webinar because I think most of the trainer right now webinar is for soft skill trainer but for technical trainer it's like right now don't have in in the market right now like you can really expose uh, the technical one you know you are absolutely right why yes. because webinars you can go sage mode. Mm. Very difficult to go instructor mode. Mm -hmm. What is a webinar? It is a seminar that's yeah. run online. Yeah. So in a seminar, you cannot check each and everyone's competencies. That mm. So you're right. In the market, you will never find a technical topic unless it is a very small uh, mm. topic. Like for example, how to open a Facebook account. Yes. Okay. Mm. Belajar dalam jam. Pass. Mm. Right? Because technical topics, they need competency assessments. You need to test whether they betul tak dia buat. Kalau mm. webinar, ada competency assessment tak ada. Mm -hmm. I think. And the most is a Q&A. Mm. But, but I heard that people do a team building webinar. Oh yes. Uh, don't call it a webinar because uh, it's usually a long-term course. Mm. And team building is not, is not technical. It's more hard. So I have a friend who actually does team building virtually and he's doing very well I because think. he uses a lot of different tools. He uses a lot of, of, of collaborative tools like Padlet. He uses uh, something called uh, Miro, M-I-R-O. It's a, it's a whiteboard where everybody can draw, everybody can put it together. And you as a facilitator, you can create the environment in there. They cannot delete. You know, it's not like they can go in and delete those things. You can lock those those items in there and you can uh, uh if you if everyone go and search later on miro it's an amazing tool it can get a bit confusing sometimes so you can create in that whiteboard you can create team one team two team three team four team five team six okay oh. people from team one only go to team one and then you see instructions there and you do your work there so it's actually like mm. a classroom it's like a classroom that wow. you cannot you cannot avoid other people from going to another team. <laughs> so these are some of the things that you cannot do. You cannot block people from going to another team unless you create different mirrors. For example, if you don't have, uh, you don't want to spend for Zoom, right? What you can do is you do Zoom. Oh, sorry, if you don't want to spend for Zoom for breakout rooms, what you can do, Google Meet, you can actually create meetings and it'll, the meeting lasts for one month. It doesn't go away. So imagine this, right? You run, a you, you run a class over WhatsApp and you say, okay, team one, 
here is your Google Meet link. Mm. When you need to do your activities, go in there, click this link, everybody go and discuss in there, and then come back. So you create five Google Meets, which will last for one month, and you just give that static link. The link doesn't disappear, doesn't change. Much like Zoom, mm. once it finishes, you have to create another link, right? No. Google Meet, you can actually create uh, breakout rooms. Mm. And you can discuss in there. So there's, the, the thing is, when you talk about tools, I tend to talk about the teacher. The creativity of the teacher will always be more important than the, the effectiveness of the tools. So, Danny, to answer that question, you can do short topics. How to bake a cake in one hour. Dengan syarat is a muffin lah. So, instructor mode means that people come to actually learn. How to detect an instructor topic? Banyak, the, the topic will start with how to. How to uh, become popular on LinkedIn. So they have to get step-by-step -step process. How to bake a cake. How to, uh, how to run your social media campaign. So when you see the words how to, usually they are in instructor mode. But some people, they don't know how to title it properly. I go in, it's a how to, sekali dia masuk sage mode. It's all Q&A. So dia tak kena lah. Kalau sage mode, usually introduction to or uh, getting awareness of or exposure to mm. or, you know, um, understanding something. Mm. Right. So the title of the webinar has to be matching with what the content is. And I don't see a lot of mm. how to. I agree. So in terms of tools, technical tools, ada banyak you can use. It's just that it tends to be longer and it tends to be a course rather than a webinar. Sorry, jawapan panjang for a short question, but I hope uh, everyone got the benefit of that. All right, okay. I think There's a question here. Aini asks, how about competency course or technical course? Aini, can you can you confirm for me what are you asking actually? Wan uh Aini, -uh. can you uh, on your mic? Wan Aini, tell me how about competency course and technical course? Yeah, much I tell you, quote daddy. Like competency, if let's say. Uh, oh, same question, Danny. Okay, so for competencies, mm -hmm. you need to to be sure what competency it is, and how are you going to assess for, and who is going to assess. For example, um, did you know that you can actually learn jujitsu, Brazilian jujitsu? This is Brazilian jujitsu BJJ mm -hmm. online. So the Gracie Academy has a, a website where you can actually learn step by step but you must have a partner. Now, how do they know that you gain your competency? The instructor in Brazil will see. So the instructor must have the ability to assess. Mm. If you make a technical competency where people send in a video of them working on, a, I don't, uh, let's just say it's, it's uh, in a factory, right? So send me a video of you fixing this. You must be able to assess visually without checking physically. Okay, so we're not talking about a, a retention assessment, which is how much you know, how much you remember. Yang tu macam kat university lah, macam kat sekolah. How much you remember. SPF is retention assessment. It has, it has no skills assessment whatsoever. It's not even a competency assessment. But competency assessment virtually gets more difficult if the assessor cannot assess virtual, visually and cannot assess from what they write. So you know your English teachers, how come they can give you mark 100 over 100 versus 99 over 100? What, what is that difference? So the assessor themselves must, must know the gradings. Uh, berapa banyak kalau dia buat dapat 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So it is not as simple as that. You must have a subject matter expert to assess. You want retention? Senang. Retention, you bagi A, B, C, D, jawab. Okay? And then the, the system itself can score. Or you got 50 out of 100. Repeat this test. So, for competency assessments, you need to have the subject matter expert there themselves. I hope that answers the question. Okay, I think so. Uh, yeah, right. Okay, thank you, Cik Bonerani said. Uh, okay, yang lain ada sesuatu lagi nak tanya, Cik Syed. Mr. Charles, do you want to ask anything, Cik Faiz? Mr. Charles, you can own your mic already. Tadi asyik pada punya kesihatan. Itulah. <laughs> okay. uh, Assalamualaikum. Uh, 
Okay, what is the best uh, software do you recommend for technical courses, especially when you have calculation and practical mm. assessment? Okay, tell me what technical course you're running or what, okay. what are you thinking about? Like uh, a heating, ventilation, air conditioning system, there will be some practical assessment, they have to do brazing. Okay. From connection of cables, and then you have to pump down the refrigerant. Okay. So how are you going to do this online? So first off, I will say this: um, there are many meeting tools. There are not many learning tools. This planet loves meetings. <laughs> okay. Google Meet is a meeting tool, it's not a learning tool. We as educators, we are forced to find tools to bring together. Okay. So. There are some technical software out there, but they're all paid. And I don't know all okay. of them. So, Charles, here's what I'll do. I'll type in my phone number. Please WhatsApp me. And I will ask. Because I have friends who are in oil and gas and in health and safety. They do have, uh, they do run such courses. Let me find out for you what software they use. Is that okay? Yeah, that'd be fine. Because it's very expensive, I guess. Yes. <laughs> yes, because the software was built for that purpose. Yeah. The other way, what I've seen one of my friends do is a bit leceh lah, but in PowerPoint, he creates um, animations. Like say, for example, air conditioning. Kan? Um, you have the outdoor unit, the indoor unit. You have the the for retention or competency comprehension purposes. He puts together a, a picture where the setup is wrong. And they have to identify which is wrong, which is right. So that's the simplest thing you do on slides. Mm -hmm. What you can also do is you can create um, a PowerPoint, uh, sorry, a Jamboard. Let, let me do this. On Miro, boleh buat. On Jamboard, pun boleh buat. Jamboard, you can spell it, Nazri. I'm typing it now. Google Jamboard. Yeah. Google Jamboard is free. You can actually create, draw parts of the, 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 the unit. And then they have to assemble in the, they have to move, 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 move it, assemble into the right, right sequence. Okay, so with the, with such limitations of virtual, there are many things you can do if you're creative enough. Mm. Simply because uh, there are no tools created for us, so we have to create our uh, our own tools based on that. That one free? Yeah, too free, because Google Jam bought too. It's in the text chat. It's free. Charles, I hope that that answers your question. Uh, but we can you can follow up with me, WhatsApp me, uh, so I have your number, and I can find out from my my friends who do actually do these kinds of trainings. Yeah. Okay. Cool, eh? right. I got one guy who does forklift training, but because HRDF does not recognize it, or even what's what's the unit that that uh, CIDB is that it? Uh huh. Uh, and he does not yeah, recognize yeah. it, so he cannot run a virtual class on forklift. He was thinking, have them do video, and he's he's smart enough to actually assess by video, but the CIDB will not allow him to do it. Okay. All right, thank you. thank you, Mr. Charles, for your answer uh, for your question. So, how about kita tanya Cik Said? Cik Said, uh, are you ready to ask Cik Said? Yes. Uh, hi. Okay, Nazrin, I just want to ask you about your facilitator of your class. I, I heard that you you are creating a virtual well, learn class, right? The virtual learn class facilitators, right? And this is open for for any uh, apa ni? new new recruit or it's, it's open to all. Uh, right now we are running the fourth cohort, uh, but it's already full. It's, I it's think, full. Yeah. Uh, I think then I can share slide too. It's it. Hello, you know. Uh, I can share, but later I, I WhatsApp lah dekat everyone's uh, because uh, kita, Cik, Cik Nazrin ada buat untuk tu class so if you interested, let me know. Okay, kita memang akan slot in lah. Cik, Cik Syed, you kalau you berminat, bagi tahu Dani, nanti Dani masukkan you kat kelas tu. There is a fees and then there are the, uh, two days dengan uh, yang long tu berapa hari? Cik Nazrin, berapa hari eh? What is, what, what is long? Uh, the, for the cost though. The cost is one month long. Uh, one month. Yeah, one month. Kalau yang short tu is a weekend. 
uh, seminggu tetapi tak boleh masak, tak boleh uh, ambil anak. It's a uh, cram betul-betul in one week lah. So it's uh, two hours a day with two assignments a day. Oh, no, yeah. besides, besides that, sorry, you you also have another facilitator dulu before the virtual one. You have the um, a few facilitators uh, program, right? your your program that you teach others so others can teach others. Okay, yeah. yes. that is a subject matter TOT. Yes, so I certify other people to run my workshops. Yeah, this you one still do that. TT. Uh, it's like if you think TTT HRDF, kan? it teaches you uh-huh. how to teach classroom. Kan? This yeah. one teaches you how to teach online. I so see. these are so two different things. Do you one still have that? Matter top, one is a subject matter training. This one is a skills training. Yeah, I know. But what, what, do you have that, that one? Which you one? Have the, the, the TOT one. Uh, the TOT one. Uh, for now, it's been on hold. I see. Okay. I managed to release a leadership program and last year and a problem solving program this year. April was supposed to be a communication program. Sekali COVID datang. So I had to put, I have to put, so far I had to put two on hold. One in April, one in July. So that gets pushed out lah. Okay, so this is the topic that actually for this class, kalau anyone yang interested to go for more details, yang Cik Nazrin cakap just now, uh, which is this is the other session. This is uh, session one, session two. The number, the six. Yeah, okay. the six classes in total. Yes. Uh, another one is this one, yes. Okay. Session four, session five, session six, and sampai ten. Tapi kita dia ada masa kat sini, yeah. Macam uh, tu, 60 minutes each session. So, that's why the class is macam longest because we know that all the trainers so ada commitment. So, kita... Ada yang kelas boleh buat malam kan, Cik Nazrin. So, it's not ganggu your yep. kerja lah on your day time. So, this one different sikit. But for industries, kalau ada client yang interested for this one, um, maybe boleh try dapatkan approval from management. Um, yeah, because this is the skills, not yang itirah by HRDF TTT. But if you don't have, maybe you can get TTT first and then you attend for this class lah later on because this one is for skills and for the virtual virtual class. All right. <clears throat> okay. Um, thank you so much, bro. Okay. Thank you very much for coming. Yeah. Thank you so much, everyone. So if if you're interested, just let me know. And then kita boleh settle lah, Ken. Kita boleh settle which is uh, kalau you nak apa nanti dah ni market your course and then kita boleh see the fee how lah later on. Right, Mr. Chas, kalau you in, um, dah ada course tu nanti let me know. And then we can conduct and I can enter you for this class. <laughs> Cik Nazrin, ya. Yeah? If you're interested. Okay, this one must, must be uh, deeper. Okay. Mm. Actually, memang struggle lah for virtual class, I would say. But we, we still, we already have clients uh, I think doing uh, some in, in-house. It's just the thing is, uh, kalau in-house virtual client trainer, apa, HR just wanted the class is on and then participant don't want to enter the class. And then the environment is everywhere. It's not in a two place. Some in the office, some in the cubicle, and some cannot be seen the public director. Some can on the mic. So a lot of funny thing when you run a virtual class, actually. Yeah, it's really struggle. But it's, it's fun to know, actually. Fun to experience. Okay, Mr. Jeff? All right. Okay, thank you, Cik Sai. Thank you, Cik Nazrin and Pernani and everyone yang ada kat sini. Thank you, Cik Faiz, Cik Chandra. Hopefully, um, if you guys know anyone who wanted to be trainer as well, you can share this one. And also can uh, link to Dani uh, as well. See how we can collaborate more lah. All right. Cik Nazrin, thank you so much for your kindness. Uh, share with us today. Okay. You have a lot of experience. I'm very honored to uh, for you share this session with Dani and all the participants here, Cik Nazrin. Okay. So if you're interested in the program, get in touch with Dani and uh, we'll make something happen. Yes, inshallah. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you again.